to the Red Sea, where the UK says Iranian-backed Houthi rebels have carried out their largest attack so far on shipping lanes. The Ministry of Defence says a British warship and US warships fought them off. It's understood that more than 20 missiles and drones were shot down and there were no injuries or damage sustained by HMS Diamond or her crew or to any cargo ships. The precise location of the incident is not known, but it happened somewhere in the Red Sea, the body of water which separates the Arabian Peninsula from northeastern Africa. The UK's Defence Secretary Grant Shapps says he has no doubt whatsoever that Iran is heavily behind the attacks by the Houthis on the shipping in the Red Sea. We cannot have a situation where a major sea route, a major ability to move goods around the world is being cut off by terrorists and thugs and we therefore must act. Well, we do know that Iran is behind so much of, I'm afraid, of the bad things that are happening in that region. And uh, uh, there have been reports, I've seen them on social media, media as well, about how Iran are providing effectively the eyes and the ears, the radar systems through ships and other things. And certainly the equipment to the Houthis who are using it to attack shipping. So uh, we call on Tehran, but also directly on the Houthis. This absolutely must stop. There will be consequences if it doesn't. Uh, and, uh, and they have, I'm afraid, failed to heed the warnings issued on the 3rd of January. We seem to see a drop off after that by a number of different countries, including the UK and the US, uh, for them to stop and to cease this action. Uh, but I'm afraid uh, last night proved they really are not listening. Our defence correspondent Jonathan Beale explained to me what his understanding was of what had happened in the Red Sea with this incident. This was the 26th attack on shipping in the Red Sea by Houthi rebels um, since the war in Gaza began. And obviously since then we've seen a build-up of Western forces, specifically the US sending a carrier strike group to the region, and they were involved in the incident last night heavily. And then the Brit British too have sent, they sent a third warship uh, to the region, um, and they have been there essentially to try to deter the Houthis, who are backed by Iran. Um, they gave a warning, Western nations, a dozen of them, including the US and the UK, on the 3rd of January, warning of consequences if the Houthis continue to target merchant shipping. And let's remember, this route is key for merchant shipping to go through um, the Suez Canal, a shorter route, rather than going all the way that, around the Horn of Africa. So it's going to, you know, it's costing Western nations money, this as well. Uh, and they've made clear, the, we the Western nations who've issued this warning, that these attacks can't continue. So it was billed as the final warning, and then the Houthis have now done this, which is their largest attack. So it was 21 attacks. Now, most of these were drones that were shot down. There were also some ballistic cruise missiles that were shot down and one uh, anti-ship missile, not all aimed uh, at, at the British warship and not all shot down by the British warship. The British warship HMS Diamond shot down seven of those drones with uh, missiles that cost more than a uh, million dollars. So, you know, it's not cheap. Uh, but I think, you know, you look at this as what's happening, the final warning given, and you've got to ask the question, what's, what's going to happen next? Yeah, what, so we heard from Grant Shapp saying this is not sustainable again. And then, as you've mentioned, he also says there are going to be consequences. What are those consequences? Well, when asked specifically about what is going to happen, is, is military action going to occur now, his reply, Grant Shapps, the UK Defence Secretary, was to watch this space. So I think that gives you a clear indication that something is going to happen. Now, we don't know specifics. We do know that particularly the Americans with an aircraft carrier with jets on board are able to strike targets in Yemen, Houthi targets, if they wanted to. Um, you've got to remember also that, you know, Saudi Arabia has been hitting targets in Yemen since 2015 and, and the Houthis have not given up. So, you know, there are fears that if you did something militarily, and I think the likelihood of military action is now much higher, what would the consequences be in the region? Would it widen the conflict? That's obviously a concern they've got to take into consideration it would be led by the US, no doubt, because they're the ones with all the military assets in the region, supported probably by countries like the UK. But we don't know timing. We don't know what the military action would involve exactly. We have just had some reaction from the Houthis, from the Iran-backed Houthis, who have said they are going to continue their attacks, despite all of this, until Israel allows full supplies of humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. So that reaction just coming to us. And also to tell you, the UN Security Council is due to vote later on a resolution that is going to demand the immediate halt to these attacks.